Welcome back, my sweet babadoodles, to an actual art topic. Imagine that, an art commentary channel actually talking about art-specific things. Simply unheard of. You know, the worst part about that joke is that it's probably not really a joke anymore, is it? But the degradation of the art commentary genre into drama-centric content aside, today we return to an audience favourite. The topic of style theft, tracing, and generalised art theft. Now as wonderful as it would be to sit here and dunk on people for being so terminally online, or cursed with still being a child enough to think that style theft is even a thing, I don't want to recreate the last thousand videos on this topic. So rather than reiterate to you in excruciating detail how you cannot steal a style or a colour palette, and that one person having a similar character to you is not the worst thing on the planet, instead today I intend to teach you how to be a filthy, filthy little tracer. Because, shockingly, tracing is a good thing. I know, clutch your pearls harder, deviant art weebs. Obviously, allow me to clarify that when I say tracing is good, I mean as a learning tool, not as a means to rip off others' hard work and pass it off as your own. For a few of you young artists, you ought to learn this sooner rather than later, but if you have any interest in working in the industry someday, that'll mean you have to be able to copy your style. Yes, being able to steal an art style is actually a requirement for working in animation. Eat your heart out, DeviantArt. <laughs> you see, you'll be given things like character sheets and stylizations that might be a polar opposite to what your usual preferences are, and you'll be expected to replicate it to the point an audience won't notice that each scene was inked by a different hand. So yes, being able to copy an art style is actually a crucial skill, not theft. Which brings me to the show and tell portion of this video, which is most of it. Because I was not one of those kids that grew up thinking about imitating art styles, and as such I find it extremely difficult to emulate other styles that aren't my own. And even my own style changes every art piece, I don't know what's going on over there. What I'm trying to get across here is that learning how to replicate an art style that is so far divorced from your usual style is something akin to pulling out teeth with your own fingers. That is to say, slippery and frustrating as you make absolutely no headway until you go and fetch some pliers. The pliers in this case being tracing. I, I hope everyone was following that gruesome analogy. So let's start by backtracking a little in my journey of self-induced suffering. I decided I wanted to learn how to draw in the Gravity Falls art style, or at least something close to it merged with my own little art quirks. Things like bringing in overlay colours, larger eyes, and just a bit more floof everywhere. But in order to merge a style and still keep to the same general building blocks of both, you need to be able to draw both. So here I am, agonising over Gravity Falls again. They just, ah, they look so weird when you block them out. It doesn't come together until the final line and I am in fucking hell. Thanks, I hate it. And I'm bringing you all along with me, so buckle in. The building blocks. I began, as I believe everyone should, with tracing. I did this by taking the four main characters of Gravity Falls and tracing out their basic shapes, in order to give me an idea of what the proportions, style, and general vibe of it all was. Very quickly I found this to be a cursed experiment. Gravity Falls characters, when broken down to the basics, are more or less just a lot of tubes. They keep this rule for almost all the different character body types, as these characters do come in all different shapes and sizes, but most can still be broken down to their simple tube shapes. Looking at these weird noodle people with their huge heads, I couldn't help but feel a singing sensation in my gut. A whisper in the back of my head that said, You'll never be able to make these look like anything more than... <laughs> but I persevered. My desire to create self-indulgent OCs that could romance men in the 60s would not be dashed so easily. Next I turned to their faces. I had a rough idea of what I'd be getting into at first, and thought that these would be one of the simplest parts to it. After all, two almost perfect circles and a button nose, easiest thing in the world, right? God, what is this? Why are they so small in the face? Why do the pupils go in different directions? Why do they have eyelids sometimes? Why does nothing look right? Oh sweet Jesus, what happened to his bones? How do these glasses merge into the nose? Is it staring into my soul? Can it see my sins? I keep telling you there's nothing weird about liking a con man in his 60s. Oh God, oh shit, oh fuck, I'm get me out of here, I'm gonna lose it. Ah, okay, so not as easy as I anticipated. You see, the simpler things are, the trickier they become to learn. Because with styles that allow for more detail, that means you have more lines, which in turn means you have more opportunities to make it all come together and look pretty. But here? Two circles and a simple line or bubble shape for a nose? Well, there's very, very little room for error, and when it doesn't look right, uh, it's pretty hard to ignore. Alright Mel, buckle down. We're gonna need to do a lot of tracing to figure this one out. So down I buckled and kept going. 
I actually did my first study before I thought to make this video, so this is actually my second go around. My first attempts looked like this for reference. Let's see if the second go around comes out different, shall we? As you can see, this one did come out a little bit different. The fluffio is stronger, but you can also see a bit more confidence to my lines and the changes that I was making. That's another big part of this whole tracing thing. It's to build your confidence as you go forward and become more comfortable with what you're doing. With that, let's move on to something a bit more complex. Tracing and adapting. All right, now the fun part. You've done it. You've dragged yourself kicking and screaming through the process of learning how to draw these two body bastards. So now you can go right ahead and throw all those rules out the damn window. Well, okay, not exactly. What I'm getting at here is this is the part where you get to start adding your own flair. As I wanted to keep to the style roughly and give it something that was recognizable as Gravity Falls, but still my own art, we turn back to tracing. This time the trace is loose, a guideline to make sure I remember the fundamentals as I add my own preferences and ticks to it. That's how we get larger eyes, more flared clothing, a few more details and floofier hair, so on and so forth. Then at the end, I step back and look at where we started and where we ended, a happy merger of the two in my opinion, which will make it a lot easier for us as we go into more complex scene traces. Because right now all we've done is figure out how to replicate these characters and style in exactly one pose, which is not great. Back to the tracing board then. This next part had a lot more to do with figuring out how these characters look from different angles with different perspective and expressions. Thing is drawing them in just one simple pose isn't gonna help you when you wanna start working in different scenes. When it came time to move from a direct trace over to my own style, you can pretty clearly see the places where my own preferences and style begin peeking in. Again, this, this hair is getting floofier whether you like it or not. You can also see a thickening of different parts of the bodies, not too much, or it would move away from the base style. And of course, the most obvious is the color rendering. The reason why I didn't attempt to keep to the same simple color and shading is because unlike these screenshots, I'm not a poor stressed out Disney animator trying desperately to meet a deadline. I'm a starving uni student with a procrastination problem that takes the form of adding too many overlay layers to everything that she does. To translate that more simply, the screenshots were limited by the nature of animation production and the additional rendering is a luxury we have when making our own products. Shout out to that one person on Tumblr that said my practice work looked like the manga equivalent to an anime. It was a really eager boost that one. And with that, I think we've had enough tracing practice to feel comfortable. Time to up the heat. Copying and reference. After a while tracing and recreating these stills, I began to feel more comfortable, which was a sign it was time to rip off the kitty gloves and move from tracing over into copying and references. This next step is simple enough, but also quite daunting. So once you reach this stage, be kind to yourself. It'll likely take some trial and error, but you need to learn to emulate style with the training wheels off and begin freeforming rather than just tracing. If you get nervous or discouraged, look back at your earliest studies. Look, see, you know you can do it because you just did it. Now you just need to have faith in yourself and be willing to make a few mistakes while finding your balance and surge on ahead. Don't worry, that feeling of fear at branching out and trying to emulate it again without a guide in new and wacky positions is natural. What is also natural is getting some less than wonderful first attempts. That is to say that you're probably going to have some ugly ass first results, but just keep at it and don't let it discourage you. Think of this as learning how to walk again, but this time you understand the fundamentals. And now it's just a matter of training yourself to move in a slightly different way. Remember the observations you made. Two eyes that overlap, simple shaped noses, tube bodies, pronounced chins, be it bubble sharp or manly man, large simple ears, big goofy smiles, typically high on the face and just beneath the nose, and general wholesome energy. All right, you've got this. Let's try it again.
All right, so I think we've gotten it down now, which means we're moving on to the final step, freeform. We've moved from learning the basic building blocks to tracing out simple and complex poses to finding a happy middle ground in our style and now we've firmly shown that we can redraw scenes freehand. Which means it's time to move to the final stage. Freeform. No pre-existing image to copy from. So far we've been drawing from templates already in the Gravity Falls style. The final step is to try without that reference already in the style. The final fear. And BAM! Ah, okay, uh, hmm, well what went wrong here? I'd say the awkwardness of these two first attempts is simply that lack of confidence and comfort that I discussed earlier. It's difficult to jump from tracing to references than to completely from your own mind, so it's normal to have some weird products when you get started. It's often said from professional artists that you should never draw directly from the mind. This is part of the reason why. References are always your best friend, don't shy away from them. As for us, well, you know what they say, try, try, and try, and try, and try, and try again, and you might make it close, maybe. So to that end, because I clearly hate myself and thought more drawing for this one video was a good idea, I asked you lovely babadoodles on Twitter to sacrifice your OCs to me. So for this section, I'm gonna be turning some of your babs into Gravity Falls style characters. This is gonna be a proper challenge because none of the characters I'm using here are my own, so by that nature I'm not familiar with them, and they're all done in different art styles, many of which don't even feature humans. In essence, this is the perfect final test and also a good way to drive me completely insane. Let's get started. I chose this bab first because, while just being a little cutie, I could see some of the obvious design choices that would fit in well with the look of child characters in Gravity Falls. Arguably the easiest characters and the most recognisable signs from the show are the kids, with their huge bubble faces. So for our first freeform OC, this was the one I chose. You can still see some of my hesitance here, the struggle is very real, but the end result is a cute button and we're well on our way. This character is from Jinx the Jinx. Secondly, I worked on this tired looking bab. The energy of this character design just spoke to me. You can clearly see on this one that I'm struggling to find my footing with the proportions and expressions still. This character has a scar on their face and a fairly detailed shirt and at this point I was still not entirely sure how to go about depicting these things and leant back into my own style a tad. Also, I was just feeling really tired when I drew this and I feel like that energy comes through in the finished product. This character belongs to Hungry Ness. At this point, I realised I was drifting too much back into my own style, and so for this next bab, I focused on sticking more closely to the Gravity Falls style. This character would fit in with the teenager to young adult looking styles that you find a lot in Gravity Falls, Wendy being a perfect example, and look, they've both got the pallet jacket going on, anyway, I'll shut up. However, I still rounded the face a bit so that it matched a little more with this character reference, while still working to keep the general shape and proportions of the teenagers from the show. This character belongs to Echo Foxtrot Art. Next, I was quite happy to include this bab because of how this design reminded me of the circus and that's something I'd like to focus on in my own works when working in Gravity Falls OCs. It helped this character was also a perfect fit for the child face shape prominent in Gravity Falls. Again, I mentioned earlier that the bubble face is very recognisable and this character was just so cute. God, I had to have it. This character belongs to Na- Ooh, oh no, your name is hard. Oh no, Niobia? Niobia. Niobia. I'm so sorry. It belongs to this person. Their, their thing is on screen. Why is my bitch of a wife here? Wanna hear a joke? Here goes. My ex-wife still misses me, but her aim is getting better. Her aim is getting better. You see, it's, it's funny because marriage is terrible. What? Damn you, Rosie, for having such cute design. I don't have much to say about this one, except, oh God, oh shit, fuck the hands backwards, cut, 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 cut. This was the first of the OCs I tackled that I had to drastically simplify. Thinking about how much of the details could be retained in the hair and facial features to keep the character true to the reference while also making sure they fit in with the rest of these. Also, I just sort of fell in love with this character design and had to include it. For this one, I looked more at the characters like Manly Dan or Ford for the body, as they're some of the few characters in the show that actually have thick noodles for limbs. Overall, I'm very pleased with this bab. This character belongs to Father Azriel. Next up, zombies are actually part of Gravity Falls, but uh, they don't look as cute as this kiddo. But that's fine, because we're gonna draw her cute anyway, you can't stop me. This was another character I needed to heavily simplify for it to work. So the face has less obvious stitching and colours have been more blocked in and bold, while I try to keep to the same design roughly. You might have noticed in a few of the previous examples that they also have faint hues in their irises. Typically speaking, in Gravity Falls, they don't have colours in their eyes, they're just black dots. But for characters like this, I decided that with two distinct different eye colours, it would be necessary to colour them to keep that detail, and after that, I just decided I would colour all of them while still keeping to the basic circular shape and lack of pupil, so that it didn't drift too far out of the style. This character belongs to Artbreaker. 
back to the child bubble faces. Mermaids are also part of Gravity Falls, so I took a look at their tail shape, finding that they had a very Disney-esque look to them. The character sheet was hyper stylized, so I felt I had a little bit of wiggle room. Although the multicolored tail wasn't gonna work when translating it into Gravity Falls, where mermaids have one simple color for the tail. I still tried to work some of the color detail back in with shading and a simple diamond pattern over the top, as well as changing the tail shape to include the lip around the character's midsection. Overall, very cute character, would draw again. This character belongs to Mimi. From here on in, there's only two left, and they're very, very different to the characters you would typically find in Gravity Falls. For example, this character was highly detailed with a lot of different design choices that wouldn't translate well without being simplified. I wanted to try and keep most of the markings on the body as best I could, and I probably did end up being a little too detailed, but I just thought it was such a neat character and I couldn't bear to part with that. The face was interesting for this character, as I mostly stuck to the young adult teen form for them, and Robbie was a pretty close reference that I could draw upon for the chin. Them, them long, long chin. This character belongs to Jinx Loose. Last on the shopping block is a Resident Evil OC, be still my beating heart. Already you can probably see a few obvious choices that don't fit well into the style we're working with, but at the same time I was able to look at characters like the Time Police to give me an idea of how detailed the uniform could be before I'd be going too far. The burns on the face and the mutated arm also gave me some trouble initially, thinking about how best to translate it into Gravity Falls, but in the end it just became a matter of keeping the shape and colour simple. Additionally, I'm also very happy that this was the last character I worked on. It was the first character offered to me on Twitter and I've been clutching onto him for weeks just thinking about how I'm going to draw him, and I'm very happy with how he came out. This character belongs to Ash for days. See kids, tracing can be a wonderful tool in your arsenal, don't be ashamed of using it. In order to get from here, you need to start here. The key is to be patient with yourself and your comfort levels, as well of, of course, being honest about your work. When I traced these early pieces, I just out and showed you that I was tracing and where from. I also did my best to only trace official art from the creators of the show, although the artist that worked on this section of the Gravity Falls comic that this forward is from goes by Kiki Kit on Tumblr, and they are like my favourite Gravity Falls artists. Thank you for the old man fan service, Godspeed. While you can use indie artist work to practice or draw inspiration from, I implore you don't upload any of those traces, it's just sort of poor form. If you really want to share the traces to show your admiration or work process, make sure to credit them appropriately and link back to the source material. If at all possible and appropriate, you can also just drop the artist a note asking if they're okay with it. It's all down to a case-by-case -case difference and it's up to you to decide what is appropriate, but just try and respect the artist that you're drawing inspiration from. And let me briefly talk to you art youngins out there. I know you've been tracing, I see into your goddamn soul and hey me too! And not always in this more appropriate way either. Frequently I'll joke about probably having trace work on my older high school DA and while it is funny in hindsight I'm also being dead serious. It's a natural part of learning and growing to look at other people's work for guidance. It's also completely normal to not have enough faith in your own art that you turn to tracing. The important thing is to grow past it as you get better and older and to not profit off others work, be that through monetary or social means. Moreover, if you only trace you'll never be able to fully branch out and create things that you really want to. And after everything we've gone through today, I hope maybe you're a little less terrified of being accused of being a tracer. Because let's be honest, you probably are. It's just a matter of if you're honest and ethical about it. Ethical tracing, now oh, there's a fucking concept. Need a word for that. Anyways, that's enough from me, I think. Thanks for joining me today in this Learn to Trace with Bell class. Now run free, you little gremlins, and trace to your heart's content. Just remember the rules. Observe and learn, don't lie, don't steal, and grow. With that, I have drawn way too much, and I'm out. Take care of yourselves, my guys. Seriously, Mal? This is what you were learning for? Yes. You don't understand. I love him. Okay, don't judge me. <laughs> Alright, take care of yourselves. I'm, I'm fucking leaving. I'm gone. No more drawing. I'm done. I'm not an artist anymore. Fuck this. <laughs>